Okay, hello people. Um, as you may know, I made probably like one recipe video so far. Uh, one of the major reasons is because I will admit I'm lazy and also because my computer always builds up with way too much um, files and it just becomes really, really slow and really hard to edit and it just gets a bit irritating. But one of the major reasons for not uploading stuff for ages, or two actually, there's two major reasons. One is that I was actually really, really busy quite a while after that, up until around March this year, uh, from about, I think, early February to about March, end of March, I was actually in the first basic level of my course. I actually started a patisserie course. So I actually took this interest of baking this hobby into an actual uh, study that I actually want to, which pretty much shows that I want to actually take it to a level of working in this area. And I took, lots of people suggested that for me, you know, I mean, lots of people obviously bake just for hobby and it's fine that way and I was fine with that way, but I guess it just suddenly hit me at some point that I do want to do this. Anyway, enough about that. And uh, second reason is that, as you can see, the quality of this video is really, really bad compared to the usual ones that I've made in the past. That is because my DV, my video camera, it has, I think, some time when I was filming with it, I accidentally didn't switch the handles on properly and it sort of slapped to the side and hit the tripod and something happened to the LCD panel screen that you can open up. and. Unfortunately, that LCD screen has been screwed for some reason. It works properly when you open it up, but you can't press any of the buttons, which is a major pain because I need to use those buttons to connect to my computer, to delete or view my files. The only thing I can do right now with that DV camera is pretty much film, stop filming, uh, switch into play mode, playback mode, or switch into uh, recording mode. That's about it. So that's a big problem. I need to either get it fixed or also probably get a decent camera to film with. But for now, I'm just using my iPhone 3GS, so that is why the quality is so bad. So, stand me, but today I will be bringing you some pretty decent information that I hope will help you out with your baking. Hola! And, um, so I figured that you know, I haven't filmed for a while, I should come back and start something since I'm on holidays. I should do something productive and really do something about my channel. Uh, if anyone watches it, that is. Um, so I figured I'd start off with something pretty important today. But as you can see, it was kind of pouring and it still is raining. It's been raining for the last two days and pouring didn't like today. Like a flood or waterfall outside pretty much. So it's probably not the best day to start. But yeah, I'm kind of rum, rum, rambling. <clears throat> okay, so as the title would, which I haven't decided, well, tell you, today is all about chocolate. And chocolate is one of the things that people usually do struggle with a lot um, when they start baking. Um, but it's something that most people who do want to do really pretty cakes and these little baked goods that really, really want to um, venture into because you want to make these little nice twirls, little garnishes nice um, covering on say strawberries and stuff and but you just like sort of look at it and be like how do they make it like that and where do I start from well I think uh, from my personal experience because when I started uh, I had no idea about chocolate and most of the stuff I just sort of looked around on YouTube and I know picked up from various places and come across words one at a time and go and look at it but there's a lot of these basic information that I learned in this course as well that I had never heard of even after baking for about two years in my own time so now there are three basic categories for chocolate now I'm not talking about you know the types of chocolate such as milk chocolate white chocolate dark chocolate which is pretty much what I knew as well uh, what I'm talking about is how chocolate uh, defined into separated into categories depending on their quality, which is defined by how much cocoa, um, the cacao beans that they have in there, and uh, cacao beans are you know the beans that makes the cocoa uh, solids cocoa content that makes chocolate chocolate. Uh, 
it's where it comes from. And so there are three kind of qualities and say say now you have just started baking like I was and you go into say Woolies or Coles, which are the two main supermarkets in Sydney. Um, and you venture down to the section for baked goods, uh, all the flowers, everything, there should be one section that's, well, from what I see here in Sydney, there should be one whole section pretty much dedicated just to a whole different ranges of, or well, a couple of um, baking chocolates. And they should come in two forms, and this is the first type of chocolate we're talking about, called regular chocolates. This is the ones that you probably come across the most for baking and it's basically baking chocolate or regular chocolate and they come in two forms chips, chocolate chips that you often use in cookies and all that kind of stuff or maybe just for anything chocolate because when they're melted they're pretty much the same or you use the bars uh, so basically regular chocolate they don't have they don't have a very high level of cocoa butter content um, and it's the quality isn't fantastic um, compared to you know the quality stuff that professionals would use um, they also when you melt them what they call they have a high viscosity which is basically they have a really sort of thick texture they're very thick when you melt them and that makes it not the perfect thing to use for enrobing which is basically when you uh, you know dip stuff in there to coat like biscuits strawberries that kind of stuff uh, we call that enrobing, which basically means covering. And so that is that is chocolate that will work. That is chocolate that will work for all these things, but they will not be the best for it because obviously because they're not the best quality. And but you know everyone uses it because it's the most easy access and one of the most regularly seen chocolate. It's a regular chocolate, um, but. As far as I'm concerned, they do require tempering, which is something I'm going to talk about. If you're going to do chocolate stuff, tempering is a very, very important procedure that you need to learn. Um, whereas most of my friends, when they hear it, they're just like, eh. <laughs> no, never mind, stuff it. <laughs> okay, so there's, there's, that's the first out of the three types of chocolate that I'm talking about. Second type of chocolate that I want to talk about is uh, curvature. Curvature basically means, uh, translates as meaning covering, as far as I know. Uh, curvature chocolate is high quality professional chocolate. It has a very high, it has a high quality of uh, cacao beans and ca I mean cacao butter, the cocoa butter. It has a high quality cocoa butter content and it has a very low viscosity, which means that, you know, the thickness is not too thick, so it will be very uh, handy for coating stuff or making molds and uh, can chocolate candy making, all these kind of stuff, because uh, because of the viscosity and its high cocoa butter content. Uh, then uh, for cocoa uh, for curvature chocolate, there is also another thing that I didn't hear about in class. But found out when I was looking up on the internet is ultra curvature. I suppose this isn't really mentioned because it is probably not something that will be used very often. Uh, basically ultra curvature is pretty much exactly the same as curvature chocolate in quality except it has an even higher amount of cocoa butter um, and because of that you know it's obviously very very good for all the things that are used in curvature chocolate, done for, uh, done with for curvature chocolate, but uh, the only difference is that it's a lot harder to make because it will, yeah, harder to make or handle because not many manufacturers can handle the balance between the cocoa butter and uh, the text, uh, getting the right texture and you know, all those stuff. It just is not an easy job to do so not a lot of people have the skills to do that so obviously as a result there aren't that many of those or it's probably just not as common and so you know if you were studying in a course like I am all the chocolates we use are curvature they're definitely very different to the ones I use at home as soon as you taste it you taste 
as soon as you taste it, you well know that it's very high quality chocolate. You just know it's different. And uh, yeah, it's just very different. And sometimes I know uh, in the Coverture chocolate that we use, they come in chip forms. They actually have vanilla in there too, which is quite interesting. And finally, the third type I'm talking about is something that I also didn't hear until I started this course, called compound chocolate. Compound chocolate basically is cheap chocolate. So it's not regular chocolate, it's even probably, I'd say, it's a lot worse than uh, regular chocolate. It's basically chocolate that does not require tempering, it's cheap, and why is it cheap? Well, because it doesn't have cocoa butter in it. It actually replaces cocoa butter with vegetable oil or maybe some other time, some other kind of oil. Uh, so, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong for anything, but this is all the information as far as I know, since I'm still learning as well, and I'm just trying to share the knowledge with you. And yeah, so because it's cheap and it's, you know, it's obviously, uh, it doesn't taste too bad. I've had it before, but really, it you can taste that it's probably not as good as regular chocolate, so let alone comparing it to Kuvicha chocolate or Ultra Kuvicha. Um, uh, so because of the way it is so cheap and so easily accessible, so a lot of hobbyists, home hobbyists and uh, chefs do actually still make use of it and you know it's so easy to use because you don't have to temper it. Uh, so next thing I'm gonna talk about is the actual procedures of Handling the chocolate. Yay! Uh, some people might be like, uh, I'm so not doing chocolate after hearing this because the procedure is actually a bit tedious. But there are ways to make it easier and uh, that's something I learned from one of the chefs from our school. Is his little sort of trick of the trade and it really, really does help. And it was, I guess it's similar to something that I was sort of already doing at home. It's just I didn't notice that. Okay, so basically... What is tempering? Well, tempering, the idea of tempering, first, before we talk about that, you need to know that chocolate is basically formed with all these different crystals. And to put it in simple words, basically, there are stuff like sugar crystals, the butter crystals, and all these crystals are formed in a certain structure at a certain sort of temperature point. And after doing that, that is why a chocolate can be so fantastically chocolatey because it's, um, you know, as in like the quality can be so good because it should be the things you need to check for to see if a chocolate has been tempered properly is when you open it up and you look at it and you see it's glossy. It's, it's got a clear snap kind of sound when you break it in half and snap it in between your hands. And obviously the text, the taste has to be good too. Um, so with all those crystals, basically what tempering does is tempering will uh, pretty much separate the crystals, uh, allowing the texture to come apart uh, so that you can rearrange the chocolate crystals basically. And then by doing that, you would slowly through the different temperature ranges that you will be handling them in, you will bring them back into, sort of arranging them back into a form where the chocolate will be nice and tempered. I don't know if that makes much sense, but you know, basically you're trying to make it glossy and snappy and set hard really quickly on its own, even without putting it in a fridge. That's these are some of the key things you need to look for when you temper chocolate to know if you've tempered them properly. So <clears throat> let's just say, uh, putting that aside, just clearing your mind. Say you're going to melt some chocolate now, and for me, I usually use Plastel Nestle's um, chocolate bars. Uh, also come in Coles and Woolies, so it's probably just regular chocolate. But they're quite nice, and I think they're much more sort of bittersweet chocolate, which is best for actual baking stuff. Um, so what you need to do, say if you did uh, just brought uh, chocolate chips, Chocolate chips, you obviously just measure how much you need and you put it in the bowl. And it has to be a bowl that you know can withstand heat. Something like a glass bowl is very nice and it's what I prefer to use. Um, if you use chocolate bars, obviously you need to measure how much you need. Then you to go to the chopping board using the right knife, which I didn't do once in class and ended up cutting my finger with it uh, because 
I was using a serrated knife, which is not the right idea. And I knew it was the wrong knife, but I was just lazy. Um, but that's a different story. But anyway, um, so for the chocolate bars, you need to cut it with the right knife. Cut it into, you know, pretty much like the same idea of chocolate chips into similar sizes. Just chopping them down to find enough, maybe usually about fingertip size. Just little ch chocolate chip sizes. Then uh, try to keep them as sort of uniform size so that they heat and melt uniformly. Put them into the bowl just as you would do with a chocolate with chocolate chips. Then what we're going to do is, how do we actually melt chocolate? We melt it with a method called bain marais. Bain marais. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I suck at French. Um, bain marais is basically cold water bath, sort of, pretty much as far as I know. Now what you do is for me, I grab a bowl. Fill it with a little bit of water, just enough so that you can create steam when it boils. What you do is put the water on, you heat it on the stove, boil it. This is very important because from what I learned from the course, it is actually very different to how a lot of people usually do it. A lot of people usually say, and this is something you, you're not supposed to do, so keep in mind when I'm showing you this, this is what you're not supposed to do is to so put the water on, turn on the heat and slam the chocolate bowl straight on with the chocolate inside. What you're actually supposed to do is, and it's pouring really hard so I hope my voice is actually coming through. So what you need to actually do is turn on the stove, heat it on medium, medium high even, uh, boil it. Once it comes to a boil then close it and then you put the chocolate on. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I suppose it's to do with you might easily overheat the chocolate and ruin the tempering and you have to start all over again once it's set, pretty much. Um, so that's why you don't want to keep the stove, uh, keep the fire on the stove going. So you want to switch it off as soon as it hits boiling point. Then just using the steam that's left in there to melt the chocolate. Now, that's how you would go about melting chocolate with a bain marais. There are different methods on how to temper chocolate and I'm about to show you those methods. Um, well, not physically show you, but I'm going to talk it through with you and believe me, people will show you all these methods on YouTube or other places. It's very easily accessible. You can even borrow books. Books will tell you. Go to um, bookstores and if they're not covered, just open them up and have a look and read them and then just put them back and you don't have to buy them. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. Um, but yeah, so, there's um, one of the most common methods is marbling. I don't know if you're interested, you probably have seen little chocolate chocolatiers, these people, professional people, melted the chocolate, it's nice and smooth, it's hit the right temperature, you pour it onto the table, and then they start using a scraper, which is a scraping tool, something like... Um, a smaller version of this, definitely not something this big, I wouldn't want to use that. Or maybe a spatula, an offset spatula. And they'll just start scraping it back and forth across the table, then gathering them up, smoothing them out, and then dropping them off the spatula or the scraper just to see the, velo the viscosity and how thick it is. And by judging by that, because they're so experienced, then they would know, mm, I think it's hit the right temperature, and that would be the time to move on. So what they would do with um, marbling or tabling, which is the two names, uh, two varying names for it, this method is that, uh, from what I know, is they take about I think one third of they take about one third of the melted chocolate, and then they put the rest onto the table, and. Basically, they would temper all the they would temp, uh, they would temper the rest by doing what I just told you, scraping it back and forth. Once it hits the right viscosity, which is the right temperature, then they would take them all up, put it back into the bowl, and mix it in with the other uh, the other ones that were originally in there. This should actually, in turn, bring it back to the right temperature because it's still warm, and these ones are cold. Mix it up, bring it back to the right temperature for you to use. And, you know, if the room is just too cold, if you have air conditioning in a house, then it might have been still set a bit too much. Then, by set I mean, you know, 
hardening or becoming too thick, then you can just heat the stove a little bit, do the same thing of a bean meringue, bring it back on and just heat it quickly a little bit, let it warm up, take it off, stir, still needs a bit more, put it back on. Um, Yes, I know you will want to know about the temperatures of the different chocolates, how to temper it, but I just go through, I just think it might be easier if I go through these methods with you first, then go back and tell you the temperatures involved. So, then there's another kind of uh, tempering method called vaccination, or more commonly known as seeding, which is basically when you chopped up all your chocolate or you measured all your um, chocolate chips, you would actually remove, I think, uh, one third of the chocolate chips and then what you would do is melt them as soon as it's melted bring it off on a from the bain marais then uh, I mean after it's melted and it's hit the right temperature take it off from bain marais then you would put in all the chocolate chips or the solid chocolates that you still have and then you mix them until it's completely melted and what this does is that seeding basically is when you have these actual chocolates that you haven't melted that you add to the ones that you've melted when they come from the same batch and what happens is these chocolates that weren't melted will provide the basis for forming the right crystal structure so the other chocolates will be like oh this is how we should be forming our structure and the other chocolates will let them form the same structure together I don't know what I'm saying but yeah you get it but yeah, so that's basically seeding and once that is done, you can obviously it should come to around the right sort of viscosity and temperature to use or you could put it back on to bring it up a little bit to the right temperature. So what is this all this like temperature to temperature to temperature thing that I'm talking about? That is what I'm going to tell you next. This is, I know this is probably hard to digest all of this, but uh, when you walk through the same information a few more times and you can go to Google and other websites or YouTube and watch other people's videos and just walk through, take them section by section and as you understand one section a bit more it's going to help you to understand another section a bit more. So the temperature, uh, each chocolate basically has a different melting point, uh, you know what they call the point where the crystals will, uh, the temperature they need to hit for the crystals to, uh, the structure to sort of like come apart, then you would have to hit a certain temperature, bringing it down to a certain certain temperature, in order for the crystals to start gathering and forming into the structure again, and then you need to bring it up a little bit more, just so that the viscosity, the runniness or thickness on the temperature is just hot enough and runny enough so that you can actually use the chocolate to do whatever you need to do whether it be like making little ribbons or little garnishes or moulds in chocolates or figurines so okay so for dark chocolate basically say I'm going to do marbling what I do is put all the chocolate in uh, fill it with water in the other bowl and uh, heat it up, boiled it, turn off the heat, put it on, melt it. And then once it's melted, uh, you can use a thermometer to measure this by the way, when you're first starting, just to make sure you're doing everything right and just to encourage you a bit more to ins by ensuring that you do come up with a tempered chocolate as a result so you'd be happy and be like, yay, ch chocolate tempering is so fun, rather than be like, oh yay, I'm totally screwed up my chocolate, I don't know what it is and I don't want to waste any more chocolate so I'm not doing tempering chocolate anymore. So, you know, it can be nice to uh, use tempered uh, a thermometer, so you can use one of those for making chocolate and candies and stuff. Put it in, for dark chocolate you want to hit 45 to 50 degrees, anywhere between those temperatures is fine. Um, then, you want to take it off. So usually it's a good idea to wipe the bottom of the bowl because of all the steam as well because chocolate is, water is deadly to chocolate. My dog's having a fit, I don't know why. Anyway, so as I was saying, you brought it up to 45 degrees, uh, between 45 degrees to 50 degrees Celsius for dark chocolate at the, for melting it. Then what you're going to do is, for the 
obviously for marbling you're going to or seeding or whatever method you're doing what you want to do is bring the temperature down to about 27 or 28 degrees Celsius so by doing that Table marbling, you obviously leave some of the chocolate and then for the majority you'll put them on the table and bring them down. My scoop, scraping, maybe I should show you, you know, scrape, scrape, scrape together, smooth out, smooth out, dropping, watching the chocolate come down, rippling, checking the, uh, the thickness. And once it hits the right thickness and you've measured it with a thermometer and you know that it has reached 27 to 28 degrees Celsius, then you're ready to scrape them up, put them back into the bowl, just make sure everything's incorporated and that they've mixed together. Then check the temperature and what you want to do is, okay, maybe it's a bit too cold now to use, just heat up the bain marais again, switch off the stove, put it back on, and be very careful you don't want to overheat it because then you're just going to ruin your entire tempering which is, you know, you create all this mess for nothing. Then just put the temperature of Vermont in there, make sure it's coming up to what you want to hit finally is around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature you want to hit for using. Um, don't make it too hot and probably remove it around like 29 or 30 just to make sure it doesn't overheat because, you know, it's so hot sometimes when you boil the water, it's going to continue to heat a bit even after you remove it. So just to make sure, be safe, taking it off a bit early is a good idea. Take it off and then immediately start to use it. Um, that goes, same goes for even if, uh, dark chocolate, even if you're using the seeding method or any other methods that might be around that other people have to teach you. Uh, it would just be bring them to the same temperature. So I will probably give you more details on this just to make this video quite short because I don't think you're going to all be able to digest this so quickly because there's so much information. It's like like an avalanche <laughs> bombarding down on you. And with my brain, I would never understand this stuff, but maybe you will. And that is why I'm sharing with you. But yeah, um... Now, milk chocolate and white chocolate, if you're using that for tempering, they have the same tempering temperature as each other. So for theirs, it's actually usually lower compared to dark chocolate. Uh, can't remember what the reason is for that, but it's something to do with the content. Uh, I'm guessing it's probably the level of cocoa butter content, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so don't take me on that one. The temperature for that would be uh, Bring it up to 45 degrees Celsius to melt them first, taking off the structure. Then next to it, that's my really cool clock in the house. It irritates me whenever it goes. And stopped. Awesome. So we're going to melt it to 45 degrees Celsius on the bain marais. Then you want to use whatever method you are using. Bring it down to about uh, fingers. 26 degrees Celsius. I need to look at any notes. Bring it down to 26 degrees Celsius. Then you're going to have to bring it up to around 29, uh, 29 degrees Celsius. And then you'll be able to use them. Now, uh, after, even when you're very, very careful with all these temperatures, you're still thinking, well, did I temper the chocolate? How am I supposed to tell? Do I have to like use it first and then be like, crumble? in, you know, tears when I sort of realized that I didn't and I waited for ages to find out that I didn't. Well, what you do is usually just take a spoon, just coat a thin layer on top, or you could just drizzle some on your table or counter. Better even if you have a marble counter because it's obviously going to be a lot faster. But generally, by doing that, it should set hard very quickly in normal sort of average day temperature. It should set hard by itself very quickly, even without the aid of marbles or um, a really cool room or putting it in the fridge. And if it sets on its own very relatively quickly and it sets glossy and it has a snap to it, then that means that it has been tempered. You can even use uh, bake, small sheets of um, silicon paper and stuff and dip it in there and then just leave it on the table as well. That's another method. Whichever way that floats your boat. 
and once you do that then you know it's ready to use uh, just make sure the chocolate hasn't dropped temperature by the point that it, those little tests have dried that it's too thick to use already for your whatever you're doing um, and I guess I wouldn't show you any I'll talk about the techniques for like making little garnishes and stuff because that can go into a different section and otherwise this video would just be too long um, I guess other things that I need to talk about is well, well some one of the some of the important basic things you want to know about chocolate as well is some of the deadly things that would uh, kill your chocolate um, causing them to pretty much be unusable just uh, basically telling you that you have to stash them in the bin and start anew. Uh, water. Any bowl that's going to con make contact with chocolate that you're using that's actually going to set hard for so all these garnishes or like covering and robing stuff uh, or little chocolate candies, truffle, uh, hard truffles. Make sure that any bowl you're using is very very clean from any source of traces of water because water will completely ruin the structure of your chocolate and make it all gritty and disgusting. I did that once with this bowl, um, I think somehow water just managed to get in there or maybe from the steam, I'm not too sure how, but when I was stirring it to melt it, it started becoming thicker and thicker and thicker instead of becoming, you know, watery and liquidy and it just became really gritty and muddy and disgusting and yeah, I couldn't fix it. I, apparently there is no way to fix it, so all you could do is throw it out. So water is very dangerous to chocolate, so be very careful about that because you don't want to waste your ingredients. And um, similarly, overheating, if you scorch your chocolate, what we call scorch or burn, burning your chocolate, basically that will cause similar things to happen and your chocolate will be ruined too and it's just, it's not tasty and no one likes burnt things. Or do they? Anyway, I guess that's about it. I've talked for ages and I don't know if you're still listening or if anyone is watching this. But that's all the information that I feel like I can give you about chocolate. And that should be enough to get you started on the journey of chocolate tempering and chocolate stuff. And I will get back to you on some other little tips very soon. Goodbye!